Across 20 years of competition, CS has seen some of the most legendary moments in the history of esports. But let's turn back the clock. Twenty-two years ago, on December 18, 2001, CPL Winter 2001 began. This tournament would come to be known as the first ever major championship in Counter-Strike history. But first, I need to give a big thanks to Leadify for sponsoring this video. Leadify is an amazing tool that allows you to track and celebrate your unique Counter-Strike accomplishments. It tracks your personal bests and gives you after-match reports to see how well you did. They even have these little achievement badges that portray your accomplishments from any specific match. You can use the compare feature to compare your performance with your friends. Their special Leadify rating uses advanced statistics to reward smart plays and ignore useless frags, giving a more accurate representation of how you did in the game in one single stat line. And hey, even if you're not a numbers person and you prefer the substance of the game, Leadify automatically finds your best play from each match and sends you a highlight generated by All-Star. Thanks again Leadify for sponsoring this video, follow my link in the description or the pinned comment to sign up for free today. The format of this tournament is something that is important to understand to get the full context of the events. CPL Winter 2001 was played before the days of MR15 in short round times. Each round was two and a half minutes long and the games were played first to 13. They played double elimination and every match was a best of one. The map pool was also a bit strange. They had a few familiar faces, Nuke, Dust2, Train, Cobblestone, and Inferno, but along with those five were Prodigy, Fire, Mill, and strangest of all, Aztec. The other weird thing about this map pool is that they didn't pick and ban maps like now. The map was set based on the round of the tournament. For instance, in the first round, everyone played on Cobblestone. Why is this tournament considered the first ever major? Well, it's because of its prize pool. $150,000 is more money than anything that had been offered in Counter-Strike before. At the time that CPL Winter 2001 was held, the second largest prize pool in CS history was a little under half of this, with WCG 2001's $70,000 prize pool. Notice how I said at the time of CPL Winter, not before. That's right, the two largest Counter-Strike tournaments ever were being held on the exact same days, on opposite sides of the world. Alright, now that the stage is set, let me introduce you to the people who showed up to compete in the largest CS tournament ever. The favorites to win this tournament were Ninjas in Pajamas. At this point, this team was not a major organization, it was just a Swedish gaming clan. This Swedish super team formed out of the best players from the region, featuring recognizable names like Heaton and Potty, as well as old school Swedish legends AHL, Hib, Median, and Veslin. Just before CPL Winter, NIP kicked Norwegian superstar Executor due to him lacking the drive to practice. Executor didn't just quit though, he teamed up with the second best Swedish team at the time, Game Online. But it wasn't just the Swedes that came to play. An American squad called Extreme 3 also attended, and they were nothing short of a powerhouse. This team featured the core of Rambo, K Sharp, and Bullseye that would go on to become Team 3D, along with NA old school legends Big Dog and Chameleon. Weirdly enough, two more players who would go on to become Team 3D members were in attendance, although they were pretty much just carrying their teams as far as they could go. Moto, the player who has a call out an Inferno named after him, led the team Dominion of Pain. Jaguar, a very influential player in the competitive scene, was now playing for a Canadian team called Infamous. An early SK gaming roster was in attendance, having signed BDS's squad called Geek Boys, the team known mostly from their classic frag movie, Frag or Die. BDS is an interesting guy. He is not only a player, but he's credited with creating the first real demo player, a program called Geek Play. He also went on to go into management with SK Gaming after his time playing there. Now let's get to the event. Our four teams are on a collision course with each other. The ninjas absolutely demolish their first round opponent, True, winning 13 to 1. X3 and Games Online fire back, both of which winning 13 to 0 in their opening match. SK also progresses with fairly little resistance. 
In the second round, NIP falter against an American clan called RDW, but manage to steady the ship and win 13-10. Extreme 3 have to play a team called Massive Attack in the second round. This team was relatively unknown, but they were very good. The legendary Norwegian Quake 2 player Dark played for this squad, as did a young talent named Nikon, who would go on to do big things in Norwegians of America. It would be completely respectable if this game had been close. In fact, in hindsight, even a loss wouldn't be the end of the world. But of course, X3 didn't lose. The best efforts of Dark and Nikon only netted MA three rounds. Oh, and Games Online? They make it to the third round. Well, they don't just make it to the third round. GOL trounces their opponent without letting a single point through. They are currently 26-0 in rounds in this tournament. SK progresses with little trouble once more against Shagwar's team Infamous. We're now in winner's round 3. The winners of these matches makes it to winner's semi-finals. Extreme 3 play against Dominion of Pain, featuring their future teammate Modo, and stomp them 13-1. Games Online faces their first real challenge with the French squad Armor Team, and manage to hold them to 4 rounds. SK plays Infernum, a young Austrian team whose core would go on to become the first ever iteration of Mouse Sports. And shockingly, they get upset. And further forwards, SK loses their first match in the loser's bracket as well, to one of the two teams that Game Online beat 13-0 earlier in the tournament. SK is out. NIP meets an English-Dutch mix team called Four Kings. Heaton, one of the stars on NIP, really did not like Four Kings. They had a larger organization supporting them, and as such, they were able to go to more tournaments. And Heaton resented them for that. And he got that anger out. In this match, one of the most iconic moments in Counter-Strike history occurred. Here is Heaton versus Four Kings. Heaton is just picking off Four Kings here as they try to fight back, but it's futile. And remember, Four Kings was not just a random pickup team. This team had organizational backing. NIP were unstoppable. If that doesn't tell you enough about how this match went, NIP go on to win 13-5 against Four Kings and secure a spot in the semifinals against Game Online. In the semis, X3 face off against Infernum and win decisively 13-6. But what I'm sure you're more interested in is on the other side of the bracket. Game Online versus NIP. This is the beef match, Executor facing off against his former team. And I would love to say that this match was beautiful, that it was a piece of art. But the truth is, I don't know if it was. These matches took place so long ago that for most of them, the demos do not exist anymore. This legendary match is a piece of lost media. All that I have is a number on a web page. 138 for NIP. In the loser's bracket, Game Online wins their first match, and in loser's semis, they face off against none other than Massive Attack. That's right, Massive Attack, after losing in the second round of winners, has fought back and won five straight matches to stay alive. They now face off against their toughest challenge yet, Game Online. DE Train, the match is dead close. It goes to overtime, and Game Online pulls it out, winning 16-14 and securing their spot in loser's finals. Three teams remain, Game Online, Extreme 3, and Ninjas in Pajamas, Executor, K-Sharp, and Heaton. X3 and NIP play in winner's finals, and once again NIP prove that they are just a level ahead of everyone else. 13 to 6. Extreme 3 versus Game Online to see who gets another shot at NIP and their superstar lineup. And X3 pull it out 13 to 9. And then there were two. The grand final is on Nuke. Extreme 3 is not falling apart like they did in Winners, they're making this one count. Or maybe NIP is just feeling the weight of $150,000 on their backs. The game is dead even. We are going to overtime. Extreme 3 win the first, and the second, and the third. One more round. They pull it out. Extreme 3 win 16 to 12. But wait, 
the tournament isn't over. X3 came from losers. NIP still have their second tournament life. They have to do it again. Reset. Zero, zero. DE nuke $150,000 on the line. It starts off the same. Not a fiber tilting in either team's favor. Dead even. 11, 11. NIP win the 23rd round. They are one round away from greatness, but they're also one round away from overtime. The heartbreaking thing about this is that this last pivotal round is another piece of lost media. The round that changed Counter-Strike forever, gone like ashes in the wind, only in the memories of those who were present. 1311 NIP game and set. Maybe if this grand final had ended differently, X3 would have became the big esports org and NIP would be a weird nostalgic clan name. Probably not, but that $25,000 difference in prize money goes a long way. Or does it? This NIP roster was picked up by SK Gaming shortly after. Who negotiated this deal? None other than BDS. No matter the outcome, this match between X3 and NIP would go down as one of the greatest matches of Counter-Strike ever. To quote the founder of Gottfrag, Trevor Midway Schmidt, this match was the beginning of professional Counter-Strike. Everyone who was there understood that CS had changed forever after the match took place. No longer was CS the second game behind Quake. No longer was CS a slow game that no one could understand or follow. CS had arrived. Thank you. Alright, I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video. I put literally everything that I had into it. <laughs> um, I think that this is my best video by far. It was really fun to make. I look forward to making another video in this style, but it'll probably be a little while because these ones take ages to uh, fully edit. But I guarantee you that there will be a sequel to this, not necessarily like the next CPL tournament or whatever, not even necessarily something else from this era, but there will be another video in this style just because it was so much fun for me to make. But uh, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed this one, and I will... Actually, I might not see you next week. I've got a busy week coming up. I might not be able to pump out another one in time but I'm assuming that I will. So still expect one, but if there isn't one, don't be surprised. I'll uh, be yeah, see ya.